night at the after hours. Woohoo! Yeah, we thought we'd make it fun. Yes, definitely. Um, just kind of being in our neon gear, and we'll also be doing some quilting in the black light as well. Yes, yep. So that'll be definitely fun as well for what we're doing. Yeah, so we got our neon colors on, our black light. We're going to talk over a little bit, and then we're going to take it back to the machine and do some stitching under the black light too. So it'll be super, super fun. For sure. So you can't quite see our faces probably as much as you can see our clothes, but we want to kind of have fun with it for just a minute while people are getting on. So while we are waiting on people to get on, don't forget don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Corey, where do you subscribe? Um, you're going to do it right down there at the bottom right hand corner. Right there. After you click on that subscribe button, make sure you click on the little bell that shows up yep. so you can get notified whenever we post new videos or whenever we go live. Yay! Super fun, super fun. Um, so, Corey, did you know that it was National Hamburger Day today? No. <laughs> Why would I know that? So, it, so this is the funny part. It's National Hamburger Day, like go grab a hamburger, eat a hamburger type of day. So I pick up your brother and uh -huh. I'm like, hey, let's go have a hamburger. It's National Hamburger Day before we film. Uh -huh. I'm like, what do you want? Where do you want to go? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you don't want a hamburger? That is my brother. <laughs> that is my, I was going to say that's your son, but no, that's my brother. Yeah, he would say something like that. I like that. I know. I was like, you don't want a hamburger? He's like, like no, no, we can have I that another day. Sandwich. I want a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A is so anyway, everything. Yeah, so that was super fun. So what we do here is we come to you after hours. Um, seven o'clock live on Thursdays in case you're new mm -hmm. um, and we welcome just kinda, if you are new welcome if you are. Thanks and for we kind of have fun right mm -hmm. we have fun we wear pajamas we wake, wear comfy wear goofy socks things like that we won't take you through the pajamas and goofy wear today since we're doing this Ooh, they look so good we are like so bright I know we're not used to seeing our screen normally summer is in charge of the screen I we know. get to see it today so this is cool, cool. <laughs> I got my little socks on that say shine light like a diamond so Fun, fun, shine, shine bright, light. Like a diamond. Shine bright. Like bright, like a diamond. <laughs> it's seven o'clock. It's all right, Rihanna. Chill out. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. <laughs> all right. Anyway. So what are we working on today? Um, well, actually, I want to have like a snack and a question time. So should we probably should throw the lights back on so that way I can see the questions. No, we'll do that. We'll actually take no, it off. Fine. Okay. All right. Hopefully awesome. Can see Everybody us, can see us. Okay. We're good. All right. So grab your snack. We have some. Of course, you probably can't see it. But we have homemade zucchini bread mm -hmm. as our snack. Yep. So grab your snack. We have our water. We're going to ask a fun question. So this is like so out of the box, but I thought this would be a good question, like how to get people in, engaged and talk to each other. What? Yeah, I haven't told you what the question was. Oh, I read it earlier. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm <laughs> over here sipping on my drink. <laughs> All right. So if you were told you had to live off the grid, like totally off the grid, in the country, no electronics, you know, totally off the grid. If you were told you had to do that, but you could take one thing with you, what would that be? Now think about like totally off the grid. What would you want to have? We're talking like no electricity off the no grid? No, ever nothing off the grid. Oh, like what would, what would be the one thing that you would want to have or that you would have to have there? And it might not be that you take it with you, but you might say, I'll live off the grid, but I have to have this. So mine is running water. Like, How is that living off the grid? I, I would have to have that though. I okay. had to be able to flush the toilet. Guess you're not going off the grid then. <laughs> no, there's ways to make that happen. So I would have to have that. What about you? What would be something that you would have to have to be off the grid? Or could like, you even okay, do, do it? Do I have like a roof and everything off the grid? Yeah, yeah. Or it's it, like it, I just got dropped off like naked and afraid style off the grid? Definitely not naked and afraid style. Okay. Just off, yeah, you'll have like a little cabin or something. Okay. Like back in the day kind of thing. Oh, back in the day kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got like clothes and everything. I'm fully stocked on that. You got clothes. I really overthink these things. You're I've really got, overthinking so it. <laughs> um, is there a stream nearby? I can't tell you that. Okay, we're just gonna say there's a stream nearby. <laughs> okay, so I've got water. I've got my clothes. I would just need a couple quilts to hand bind, and I'd be good. Oh, really? Honestly, I could just look out at the scenery and just go and hand bind. I'm such an old soul, y'all. We sit there and hand bind. It's hard right now with my finger. Yeah. Be surprised oh. what you can't do without an index finger. Would you be in a rocking chair? I would be in a rocking chair. <laughs> I would. They asked you how your finger is. How's your finger feeling? My finger is doing well. Thank you all for asking um, from its unfortunate accident uh, last week. It's already been a week. Yeah. Um, but it's doing very well. The antibiotics and the ointment that I put on it every day is really helping. So hopefully it'll be semi-healed yeah. rather soon because I want to go to the lake. Oh, <laughs> this one's good. Rita said solar powered generator. Oh, that would take care I of everything. <laughs> then I wouldn't have an issue. Good job, Rita. Then I, I could have my long arm with me. <laughs> Life would be great. I'm not sure if it would generate enough amps for a long arm. 
I'd figure out a way. That would be kind of a cool question. I'd bring I Ryan with me, and he could just pedal a bike <laughs> and keep it going. He can offset the energy. You can offset the energy, Ryan, pedal the bike. <laughs> He's just looking at He's me. Like, That's whatever. a no. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's crank back on the lights and let's talk about what we're going to be working on. Yeah, we'll today. talk about that just for a minute and then we'll go back and we'll be back in black light mode again. Woo, now it's really bright. I actually was liking the dark there. Nope, sorry. Lighting. After hours, a little rest. Lighting is everything. <laughs> but you can still kind of see because we have it still on. So it's a That's little true. bit. So. Okay. Um, so today, like we talked about last week, we are going to be looking at the nine patch, book one and two. Uh, within the nine patch book, there are a lot yeah. of designs. The combo one and two book. The book, yeah, the book one and two combo. There are a ton of designs in this book, right? Do you remember why? What's the book one and two? So people that might have had this book for a while. Hi, Diana. You tell us <laughs> why. So they had a book one and they had a book two, but they were smaller. And they and when it was time to reproduce, Pam decided why not just put them together so that they could have all the designs in one book. So that's why there's a book one and two. So if you got a book or inherited a book that's from a long time ago and it says book one, you have half of the book. So if you have book two, you have the other half. So this is just putting the two books together and it's awesome and great and we're gonna show you some designs in it today yeah. and we are excited. Yeah, so definitely the, the difference between those books was book one was more of those entry level beginner to intermediate designs Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then the book two section would take you intermediate to advanced designs. Exactly. And this is all based off, off a nine patch block which we're gonna look at today. We have one stitched out on the quilt. Um, but you can also look at this a completely different way and we'll show you that towards the end of what we're doing. All right. And guess who's up first, ladies and gentlemen? Ooh, under black light, I might be able to do it. Well, now you can see it a lot better under black light. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> All right, so, so we're gonna head on back to the back. When let's, you say black light, you mean like completely black light? You want everything off again? I think let's let's try, and then if we really don't do very well, we'll put it back on. But I think okay. it's fun because we're using neon thread and everything. All right, well let's head so back let's over to the that. machine and let's take a look. So over at the machine, you'll see that we already have those. Um, Nine patches stitched out, and they're a little harder to see because they are done in a silvery thread, so it's not glowing. Um, but what we've got here is we've got those nine patches, and Diana is going to take you through. I'm actually not going to be able to see. We're going to flip on the... You're going to see just fine. You can see great. Well, no, i got to show them the picture in the book. You're not gonna, no. Oh, you saw... We have the vivid light. Oh, that's right. You can that. flip that. Okay. All right. So go ahead, and you can go ahead and rock that light to, to white light form. There oh, we go. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. All right, and so see what you're working on. So here, can they see it okay? Mm -hmm. This is kind of kind of show you like the beginning. So there's really basic stuff in here to kind of get you started. And you notice my name's really close to the front compared to Corey's will be closer to the back. So <laughs> I'm going to work on this one right here. Hopefully you can see it. So we're going to have. Oh, it is harder trying to do these black light stuff. Oh, start here, and I like how it has directions. So I'm actually going to probably draw a little bit with the chalk pencil, the directions, and then I'm going to end up end up looking like that. So hopefully you guys can see that okay, and we'll give that a shot. So I'm going to take a chalk pencil. Okay. And then if you'll turn on the light just so I can just the, just the overhead. I'm old. I'm blind. Just in case you guys didn't see it, there we go. All right. So Corey, let's see. So like he was trying to show you, here's the the nine patch that we stitched out. And I am going to try to do this because I have not done this before. Let's go. So we'll have the circle here. So we're going to start here like it says. We're kind of going to kind of just make a circle. We just kind of draw on a perfect circle. So basically with that circle, you're wanting to use that whole center block of that nine patch to fill that circle up so that each part or each arc of that circle should be touching one side of, and you can push your machine back, I don't have to be in it, um, should want to touch one side of each one of those corners. Oh, this is going to look bad. No, it's not. It's freehand. <laughs> it's your design completely. <laughs> We're going to see. We're going to make it work. There you go. To a point. And then into a point. There you go. And so what Diana's using right now is that chalk pencil just to lightly chalk on the design and then that can be erased off afterwards, which is really nice. Yeah, just so I have something to look at because, ooh, 
Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All righty. If you want, you can put the take that light back on. We'll do it in our glowing so we can glow with them. Okay. Then they don't have to. No, yeah, you're right. They actually will see really good mm -hmm. how bad it is. All right, so hopefully you can see okay. Sorry if my hand's in the way doing my stitching. You have a single stitch on that button as well. It's still there okay. from last week. All righty, here we go. And let me fix that because it's going to drive me crazy. There you go. <laughs> okay, all right, that's a start. Uh, that's a start. So it is a little harder to see actually without the light totally on. Okay. So, I'll turn this one on first. Yeah, so we had fun. There was a black light for a while. So that's going to be one continuous motion there. Going all the way around those arcs. Moving our thread out of the way. <laughs> so this tells you, this is why you practice, practice, practice. Do you have some scissors by chance? Uh, yeah. Feeling great. Corey's will look so much better. But the reason I do this too with you is so you can see that it's okay to not do it perfect. It just takes practice. Um, and to even get me on a machine. Right up to that point. And this is one of those designs that we had talked about last week, not being afraid to cross the piecing lines within that nine patch. Like Diana's doing right here, she is easily just stitching right over those seam lines and making that whole block come together as one cohesive piece instead of, you know, nine separate squares. And it's okay just to cross right over that piecing line and get your mind out of each one of those squares has to be done individually. That's not too bad now that I got moving. It's yeah. just my circle. I wonder how I could fix that up. A uh, circle template, maybe? Oh, oh it breaks it up. I'm sorry. Um, you can do a spiral in there. Then there's no telling where it's at. I have no idea what you're talking about by spiral. No, not like a sp Go like around in a circle. <laughs> oh. Oh, that kind of spiral. What, that's the... Okay. Well, I already that's where you this. can do a wavy cross hatch. There you go. All right, so now you can see that you probably will already do a lot better than me. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, you did great. So, um, we had a question, what size nine patch block did we stitch out? This is using a 14 inch size block, 14 inch square. Yeah, and you can do, got. yeah, any size, you can do any size. They have, and we actually have stencils and we'll show you, you don't have to actually stitch out a block or have a pieced one to be able to do these designs. Mm -hmm. Our last one, we'll show you how to actually do a stencil with it. Right. All right, so I've come to page 51 here on mine, and let's pull up her thread real quick. Um, okay, move this desk back. We can trim our threads. And this is gonna be using a different, another, um, it's a, called a basic eight stencil. So we're gonna be following this design here on page 51. And we're going to be using not only our nine patch grid or nine patch piecing lines, but I'm also going to be using my basic eight stencil. And what that basic eight is going to do is it's going to give me, I'll show it to you right there. It's going to give me multiple lines of contact as well on that piecing to find exactly where I want to put those freehand designs. So what I'm going to do is I will take my basic eight and I've got a label on it stating what basic eight that it is. That label will always be facing down with these stencils. Move that back and we'll Set that to the side. And what I'm going to do is I want to find where these four lines intersect. So actually two lines, one and two. And I want to get that to where they all hit all four corners of my block. And that's how I'm going to be able to find the exact center of the block as well. So I'm going to take my pounce powder, give it a little bit of a hit, open it up. And I am going to chalk this whole thing. So holding my finger in the center to keep it still. Yeah, and you, when you chalk, you don't have to pounce it down. You just kind of wipe it like he's wiping. Yeah, and it keeps too it from heavy. being less messy. And it makes it so it's not so heavy in there. Just like that. Yep. And we're using the Ultimate White Iron Off uh, Pounce Powder right now. Mm -hmm. So you can take an iron to it when you're done mm -hmm. if you want to, or you can erase it off as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so with my book here, it's showing me that my start point is going to be in the upper left-hand corner of my center block. 
So this is where I'm going to start. So I'll put an S there for start so I know where I'm headed. And then I'm going to be headed out this way to one of the center points. My finger's in the way. Can't see anything. Sorry. Out this way towards one of the center points. And then from there, I'll come up here to this center point, swing way out, touch the line of that piecing, make a little bit of a curl, come back in, swing way out the opposite direction, touch a little bit of that piecing, make a curl, come back to this section. We'll do another loop in closer to the center, back out, up to there. You can choose to go all the way to the corner if you would like. This design doesn't, but if you'd like to go all the way to this corner, you can. Come back here, come back, and do that all over again all the way around. So that's, you know, you could use the 9-patch um, stencil and the 8 if you don't have a 9-patch. Correct, yeah, yeah if you so just you have an open block. the 9-patch stencil just for a second, so. If you just have an open block, say, for instance, a whole cloth or just have a big piece, this is a 14-inch 9-patch uh, nine, uh, nine that you could lay in that block pounce it down with the powder, and then you have those lines to follow up. So then you have a beautiful design, which is a block design. doesn't necessarily have to be just a nine patch. These are block designs as well. Yeah. So you can be making your own block design. And we have it in a nine inch too. So in, in most of our stencils will come in both sizes. Yeah. All righty. All right, so let's see what we can do here. So starting points right here, upper left-hand corner of that center square. I'll take a single stitch to bring up my thread. Do a few more singles to tie it off, and then I will go ahead and trim a tiny bit of the tail here, and we'll start stitching. Another thing is you don't ever want to trim your tails too early, because even though you did a tie off, sometimes that thread can disappear, and then you got to go through all of this again. So leave a little bit of that tail. Once you get to here, you could stop. I'll have it stop in the needle down position, and then from there, we can cut those tails so they're out of the way. So we're going to start it up, coming into the center with a little bit of that. I'm going to stop right here in that down position so I can trim my tails so they're out of the way. And then we're going to go up this way, come in with a little bit of a curl. And I'm not following directly on my chalk line because otherwise I might get a little tense. You just want to use it as a guide. To there, come in this way, all the way out to the point. So then we're going to come in here. Uh-oh, that was a little bit of a different one, wasn't it? A little bit of a different one, but that's okay. Come up this direction. It's a design choice. Come up here. Curl it out. Then what I'm going to do is, because I keep getting that one little loop wrong, and I'm going to find my chalk pencil, and I'm going to mark it out again just so I have the idea of it. So I'm right here at this point, so I come this way, make that loop, and come out. I'm going to mark all those loops just so I have them. And chalk pencils are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. So having any kind of marking tool that can come off is very helpful. <laughs> well, especially when you're trying to find the exact direction you need to go in with it, and otherwise you end up with one of those little pearl things. But hey, it was meant to do that. I meant to do that. <laughs> all right. So piece here, come out this way point. Oh, that was a little off. That's all right, though. Come here. Come out with that center loop. This way. Loop again, doing our piece of our heart here. Loop. And tie off. That looks really good. Yeah, a that couple a little, than what I did over couple there. little <laughs> iffies, but that's okay. <laughs> Practice, practice. Practice, practice, like practice. You said, design choice. That's all it takes. It's my design choice. All right. So just like that. And then I have that iron off that would steam this off. Um, if it's light enough, you also have the ability to erase it off with your chalk pencil.
So some of them are a little too thick, like I put a lot of chalk up there. I wouldn't use my chalk pencil for that, but I could use the eraser of this one just to easily get that away. Come in with an iron to finish off that extra piece, but that looks really cool and that'd be really nice in a block as well, just not, not even just a nine patch. Mm -hmm. But looking at using a little bit of that crossing over the piecing line can really help, besides that one little blurb. You know what okay. I noticed though, Teamed. by having like the nine patch, whether it's already stitched out or whether you use the pounce, mm -hmm. um, it just gives you somewhere to go and stop. So right, it gives you those it's, guidelines. it's just guidelines, so that's all it is. if you don't have that is. piecing, that, that helps. And we always need some of those guidelines, trust me. Alrighty, well let's move over to the last one and show how we can use the actual nine patch stencil and then put some designs with it. Okay. We'll let Corey do this one since uh, he does so much better than me. Oh, that's funny. I wasn't prepared to do this one, but okay. I can make it work. We can figure out something. Well, let's pounce it. We can pounce it and then we'll come up with ideas. We'll pounce it and come up with ideas. Maybe I'll do this one right here. It'll be interesting. We'll see what I can make it look like. Okay. Um, so this one is actually stitched out to be this exact size. So you'll see the idea of it, but we're just going right over the seam line already. Um, so I would take this label side down for our stencil, label side down, take my pounce powder and just lightly brush over this, holding the stencil to make sure you don't keep it from moving, It'll look just like that, <laughs> holding that stencil in the center, keep it from moving, lightly brush, and you can see on the seam line already it's already been brushed on, but you would have that same idea, mm -hmm. you would brush it right onto that center point. For this one, I'm gonna use my basic eight stencil again. Label side down. If you guys have questions, feel free to put them in the comments too. Finding the center of that block with the two lines. Get some chalk back in there, so pounce it right on our hand. Hold down the center, lightly brush. Now if you're doing this on light fabric, you could use the blue or the pink chalk. We had a question about that. So you could use a blue or pink on the light color fabric to see it better. And then on maybe on the darker fabrics, you could use the white. So there are different colors out there. For sure. And we do, we do carry them all on our website. So, okay. And we had somebody that said they use a scrap of batting that helps get rid of it. That would make sense wiping it off the chalk. So, mm -hmm. okay. You want to, what are we doing? I don't really know. <laughs> you want to give I'm that one a shot these, or give another one? I don't know. I don't know if I really want to give that one a shot. Maybe I'll give this one a shot. Some old feathers. See how we'll go. Okay. So we're starting. There we go. So I can starting see. down here in the bottom left hand corner of the center block, so bottom left. Following our start points, we would be going up this way with a little bit of a half of a heart, feathering it up, feathering it back down, coming into the center and back around. Now this one will not be stitched uh, continuous unless you do, you could do actually just stitch in the ditch around it. That's what it's looking for right here. It's hard to see. But there is stitch in the ditch around that center block to make these continuous. Okay, you want to show it up a little closer, it was hard to see. And down. Uh, there we go, perfect. All right, so that's what he's going to work on. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So I'm going to start here, bottom left-hand corner. And I am going to head this way into my first point of my heart. So the center point of my heart. And then coming in. And if you want to really fill this block out, you can. So filling that all the way up to a half of a heart. Finish out the half of a heart, finish it all the way back. And I would bet, I mean, I'm not a professional quilter or anything, but I would bet the more you do this, it becomes second nature, so then you don't have to chalk it each time. Right, yeah, if you're yeah. doing this a bunch around a quilt, um, I can see how it would be really easy to catch on to it. Um, but I just want to make sure that I have it as best as I can around this. So we're using this stitch in the ditch in the seam of this block, or if you don't have that seam following the pounce powder, working your way all the way around, and then we would come in to finish off these uh, center arcs. So we're gonna see how this one goes. I didn't practice this one. <laughs> so take a single stitch, a few more singles to tie off. Trim these down just a hair, not all the way though, because we don't want those threads to disappear. And then I will start, and I'm going to do this one-handed so y'all can see. So we're going to see how this turns out. So we're going to come in, starting with a nice half heart. And we're taking one feather, backtracking it over it. 
Half heart again. Half heart again. That's my first one. And this is where a nice straight edge or a nice ruler would come in handy. I don't have one right now because I don't have a ruler base on it. We're not really going that far. But if you had that straight edge, you could set it up right against your hopping foot and follow it up the ditch so you know you're getting that perfect stitch in the ditch. And then once you get to your next point, you do your half heart, feather, half heart, using that stitch in the ditch, and it's gonna be the same thing. So coming up, half heart, and how many plumes did I do? Three, so three, half heart, Just like that, a little bit of stitch in the ditch, half heart, and feather. And you can see I don't even have these chalked anymore, but I've got that muscle memory down to where it's nice and easy for that natural flow. And I say that now I'm probably gonna mess up, but that's okay. Using a little bit of stitch in the ditch and half heart it again. Three. Half heart. And half heart. And we're going to do that all the way around. It's almost done. And this one doesn't have a half heart on this four, so we just hop over. And that was a much bigger one, but that's okay. Uh oh, now I said something. Come through, drop it down. Half heart. Come here. Just one more. And then I have that center portion, and we'll be done. Okay, my mind's backwards. Hold on. There we go. Got to get in the right flow of it sometimes. So we'll do a little bit of stitch in the ditch. So that finishes up with the outer pieces. So now we look here for our inner pieces and it's just coming in and we're going to actually touch the center. Can I see that? Yeah. Touch the center of this with our arcs and then we'll finish back off at the same point. So if I was to chalk this, chalk to the center, back out, center, back out. Center, back out, center, and finish. We'll start it back up. Do a few tie off stitches to lock it down. And then we, uh oh. My buttons aren't in the right spot. There we go. Lock those down just like that. All right. And then move the machine out of the way, and not too bad. Well, let's show them kind of all three of them, and then we'll take it back up to the front, and answer a few more questions, and. So I can just come in with my chalk pencil if I want, if it's thin enough, and kind of just erase that chalk away. Just like that. Not too bad, actually. Uh oh. Oops, sorry. You think, am I taking? Uh oh, sorry. My chair took y'all. All right, so we have the one that I attempted, which is, well, yeah. You did a great job. <laughs> I think you did. Maybe if it was on the fabric where you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you still did a great job. Let's turn on black light so they see the stitching. Okay. Because right now you're seeing a lot of fabric and a lot of. Oh, yeah, so let's do, we can turn off the lights too. We're in our, since we're in our black light mode, you're right. This is our black. Oh, that looks really good with the black light. Yeah, that was <laughs> a good idea. You actually see the design yeah. itself. Um, so with that one, you've got those center pieces. Um, and it just kind of flows all around. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, well, let's go finish up in our black light up at the front and let's see. Let's see what we can do. So those are our finished little pieces there. Just like that. And we're back up here. Oh, wait, whoa, you turned me off. We just gotta let them have fun with the black light just for a few more seconds and then I'm gonna flip everything on. Okay.
So chalk in the black light. <laughs> um, all right, so that took you through the nine patch book one and two. So that was three designs out of that book. And if I'm not mistaken, that book is 58 pages, maybe more. I think it was a little bit more than that. Might be more than that, 60, 65? 65. 65 pages of different designs. There's so many different things within that book, so many different design ideas. And just remember, it's not always just off of a nine patch block itself. Mm -hmm. You're looking at all sorts of different things. And if you even have a computerized machine, yeah. it'd be really cool to, if you have the feature <laughs> to drop the belts and do a little bit of record, Yeah. and you can record your own designs and then use them over and over again. Oh, that's a really good now, idea. Can't sell them, because that'd be a copyright but mm -hmm. you could record them and use them over and over again in your library. Yeah, oh, yeah. that'd be super fun, super fun. Yeah. Um, so what was I gonna say? I don't remember. I don't know, when she gets really quiet like that, you know, she's really thinking. She's no. not really listening to what I'm saying. She's thinking about what she's gonna say next. <laughs> I know what she's doing. That's, that's pretty true. That's 100% true. true. That's <laughs> true. Um, so uh, we do have the books on our website um, mm -hmm. and we have the stencils on our website. Now the books still have a coupon code with them, mm -hmm. so don't forget to go to longarmsupplies.net, use that coupon code, it's only valid on the book, 20% off, but it's on any of the Pam Clark books because we're going to continue showing books on our lives. We have super fun. We're going to look at a few questions and then we're going to show you what we're going to do next week. So Corey, do we have any questions? Um, thanks for showing the directions, found some confusing. Yada, 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 da, 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 love the designs, thank you. Might try it now that I saw you do it. That's the <laughs> goal. Um, for the threads, so actually, the question on the neon threads. These are glide threads, mm -hmm. um, and these are, uh, what are they, $8.99? $8.99, mm -hmm. yeah, 5,500 yards, eight ninety fun, fun colors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our lines have neons in there. Yes. We just, this one has the most that we have, so Correct. we thought we'd put them out for show, but yeah, lots of fun, fun colors. Yep. Yeah, they could just do so much with it. Turn on some black light and just have a good old time. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I know, there's so much fun you can do with so many different fabrics. Completely different look when you use those neon threads. Yeah. Um, how did you say that you save the design? Oh, basically, if you have... What was the question? You like, just mumbled it. No one so, heard what you said. Well, they, how, do you, how, do you, how did you say you could save the design? But that's a computerized thing. It's not a... Yeah, that's, so for computerized machines, depending on what brand you have, only certain brands can do it. You have a record feature, and if you hand guide, you can record what um, you're hand guiding. Like, for instance, I have a Statler, and I can do that on my Statler. Yeah. Um, I don't know what all brands can. I just know ours can. Um, but I can record my freehand designs, and then if I'm doing it on... 20 blocks and yeah. it can be over and over it's again like copy, but and paste, copy and paste copy and paste yeah fun okay so let's show them what we're going to work on next week and then we're going to let them go okay um so next week we are going to be looking at the marquee book um so this one is basically that kind of like that eyeball shape yeah well, I, I think of like a marquee diamond or a marquee diamond yeah it could be that <laughs> as well that's kind of probably what it was but it looks like an eyeball to me <laughs> Um, and so with this one, it's going to show you... sideways eyeball. Leave me alone. Okay, go <laughs> no, home. No, now it's an eyeball. That. Okay, now it's blink, an eyeball. Blink, blink. Leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, so oh, this no, can no, be I used... I think they know what a marquee No, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, so this can be used in multiple different pieces of a quilt, certain parts of a double wedding ring, yeah. all sorts of things like that. Um, so we're going to look at this book and the stencil that goes along with it so you can see what all designs and possibilities you have. Yeah, it should be super fun. Yeah. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Remember, we're here Thursday at 7 Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here for you to answer questions, have fun. If you came in later, you know, after this post, go back and watch the beginning. We had lots of fun. We were all decked out in black lights and having a good old time. Yep. So um, thanks for watching. All right. Always make sure that you're subscribed to our channel, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.